In physics, the Coriolis effect is the apparent deflection of moving objects when the motion is described relative to a rotating reference frame. In a reference frame with clockwise rotation, the deflection is to the left of the motion of the object, in one with counterclockwise rotation, the deflection is to the right, although recognized previously by others. The mathematical expression for the Coriolis force appeared in an 1835 paper by French scientist Gaspard Gustave Coriolis, in connection with the theory of water wheels. Early in the 20th century, the term Coriolis force began to be used in connection with meteorology. Newton's laws of motion describe the motion of an object in or inertial frame of reference. When Newton's laws are transformed to a uniformly rotating frame of reference, the Coriolis force and centrifugal force appear. Both forces are proportional to the mass of the object. The Coriolis force is proportional to the rotation rate and the centrifugal force is proportional to its square. The Coriolis force acts in a direction perpendicular to the rotation axis and to the velocity of the body in the rotating frame and is proportional to the object's speed in the rotating frame. The centrifugal force acts outwards in the radial direction and is proportional to the distance of the body from the axis of the rotating frame. These additional forces are termed inertial forces, fictitious forces or pseudo-forces. They allow the application of Newton's laws to a rotating system. They are correction factors that do not exist in a non-accelerating or inertial reference frame. A commonly encountered rotating reference frame is the Earth. The Coriolis effect is caused by the rotation of the Earth and the inertia of the mass experiencing the effect. Because the Earth completes only one rotation per day, the Coriolis force is quite small, and its effects generally become noticeable only for motions occurring over large distances and long periods of time, such as large-scale movement of air in the atmosphere or water in the ocean. Such motions are constrained by the surface of the Earth, so only the horizontal component of the Coriolis force is generally important. This force causes moving objects on the surface of the Earth to be deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. The horizontal deflection effect is greater near the poles and smallest at the equator. Since the rate of change in the diameter of the circles of latitude when traveling north or south increases the closer the object is to the poles. Rather than flowing directly from areas of high pressure to low pressure, as they would in a non-rotating system, winds and currents tend to flow to the right of this direction north of the equator and to the left of this direction south of it. This effect is responsible for the rotation of large cyclones. To explain this intuitively, consider how an object that moves northwards from the equator has a tendency to maintain its greater speed at the equator, where the horizontal diameter is larger, and therefore tends to move towards the right as it passes northwards where the horizontal diameter of the Earth is smaller, and the speed of local objects around the central axis of the Earth is slower. History Italian scientist Giovanni Battista Riccioli and his assistant Francesco Maria Grimaldi described the effect in connection with artillery in the 1651 Almagestum Novum, writing that rotation of the Earth should cause a cannonball fire to the north to deflect the east. The effect was described in the tidal equations of Pierre Simon Laplace in 1778. Gaspard Gustave Coriolis published a paper in 1835 on the energy yield of machines with rotating parts, such as water wheels. That paper considered the supplementary forces that are detected in a rotating frame of reference. Coriolis divided these supplementary forces into two categories. The second category contained a force that arises from the cross product of the angular velocity of a coordinate system and the projection of a particle's velocity into a plane perpendicular to the system's axis of rotation. Coriolis referred to this force as the compound centrifugal force due to its analogies with the centrifugal force already considered in category 1. 
The effect was known in the early 20th century as the acceleration of Coriolis, and by 1920 as Coriolis force. In 1856, William Ferrell proposed the existence of a circulation cell in the mid-latitudes with air being deflected by the Coriolis force to create the prevailing westerly winds. Understanding the kinematics of how exactly the rotation of the Earth affects airflow was partial at first. Late in the 19th century, the full extent of the large-scale interaction of pressure gradient force and deflecting force that in the end causes air masses to move along isobars was understood. Formula, in non-vector terms, at a given rate of rotation of the observer, the magnitude of the Coriolis acceleration of the object is proportional to the velocity of the object and also to the sine of the angle between the direction of movement of the object and the axis of rotation. The vector formula for the magnitude and direction of the Coriolis acceleration is where is the acceleration of the particle in the rotating system, is the velocity of the particle with respect to the rotating system, and omega is the angular velocity vector which has magnitude equal to the rotation rate omega and is directed along the axis of rotation of the rotating reference frame and the times symbol represents the cross-product operator. The equation may be multiplied by the mass of the relevant object to produce the Coriolis force. See fictitious force for a derivation. The Coriolis effect is the behavior added by the Coriolis acceleration. The formula implies that the Coriolis acceleration is perpendicular both to the direction of the velocity of the moving mass and to the frame's rotation axis. So in particular, if the velocity is parallel to the rotation axis, the Coriolis acceleration is zero. If the velocity is straight inward to the axis, the acceleration is in the direction of local rotation. If the velocity is straight outward from the axis, the acceleration is against the direction of local rotation. If the velocity is in the direction of local rotation, the acceleration is outward from the axis. If the velocity is against the direction of local rotation, the acceleration is inward to the axis. The vector cross product can be evaluated as the determinant of a matrix, where the vectors i, j, k are unit vectors in the x, y and z directions. Causes The Coriolis effect exists only when one uses a rotating reference frame. In the rotating frame it behaves exactly like a real force. However, the Coriolis force is a consequence of inertia, and is not attributable to an identifiable originating body, as is the case for electromagnetic or nuclear forces, for example. From an analytical viewpoint, to use Newton's second law in a rotating system, the Coriolis force is mathematically necessary, but it disappears in a non-accelerating, inertial frame of reference. For example, consider two children on opposite sides of a spinning roundabout, who are throwing a ball to each other. From the children's point of view, this ball's path is curved sideways by the Coriolis effect. Suppose the roundabout spins counterclockwise when viewed from above. From the thrower's perspective, the deflection is to the right. From the non-thrower's perspective, deflection is to left. For a mathematical formulation, see mathematical derivation of fictitious forces. An observer in a rotating frame, such as an astronaut in a rotating space station, very probably will find the interpretation of everyday life in terms of the Coriolis force accords more simply with intuition and experience than a cerebral reinterpretation of events from an inertial standpoint. For example, nausea due to an experienced push may be more instinctively explained by the Coriolis force than by the law of inertia. See also Coriolis effect. In meteorology, a rotating frame with its Coriolis force provides a more natural framework for explanation of air movements than a non-rotating, inertial frame without Coriolis forces. In long-range gunnery, site corrections for the Earth's rotation are based upon the Coriolis force. These examples are described in more detail below. The acceleration entering the Coriolis force arises from two sources of change in velocity that result from rotation. 
The first is the change of the velocity of an object in time. The same velocity will be seen as different velocities at different times in a rotating frame of reference. The apparent acceleration is proportional to the angular velocity of the reference frame, and to the component of velocity of the object in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This gives a term. The minus sign arises from the traditional definition of the cross product, and from the sign convention for angular velocity vectors. The second is the change of velocity in space. Different positions in a rotating frame of reference have different velocities. In order for an object to move in a straight line it must therefore be accelerated so that its velocity changes from point to point by the same amount as the velocities of the frame of reference. The effect is proportional to the angular velocity, and to the component of the velocity of the object in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This also gives a term, length scales and the Rossby number. The time, space and velocity scales are important in determining the importance of the Coriolis effect. Where the rotation is important in a system can be determined by its Rossby number, which is the ratio of the velocity u of a system to the product of the Coriolis parameter and the length scale l of the motion. The Rossby number is the ratio of inertial to Coriolis forces. A small Rossby number signifies a system which is strongly affected by Coriolis forces, and a large Rossby number signifies a system in which inertial forces dominate. For example, in tornadoes, the Rossby number is large, in low-pressure systems it is low and in oceanic systems it is around 1. As a result, in tornadoes the Coriolis force is negligible, and balance is between pressure and centrifugal forces. In low-pressure systems, centrifugal force is negligible and balance is between Coriolis and pressure forces. In the oceans all three forces are comparable. An atmospheric system moving at u equals 10 meters per second occupying a spatial distance of l equals 1000 kilometers has a Rossby number of approximately 0.1. A baseball pitcher may throw the ball at u equals 45 meters per second for a distance of l equals 18.3 meters. The Rossby number in this case would be 32,000. Needless to say, one does not worry about which hemisphere one is in when playing baseball. However, an unguided missile obeys exactly the same physics as a baseball, but may travel far enough and be in the air long enough to notice the effect of Coriolis. Long-range shells in the northern hemisphere landed close to, but to the right of where they were aimed until this was noted. In fact, it was this effect that first got the attention of Coriolis himself.